Ethnography is the systematic study of people and cultures. It is designed to explore cultural phenomena where the researcher observes society from the point of view of the subject of the study. An ethnography is a means to represent graphically and in writing the culture of a group. The word can thus be said to have a double meaning, which partly depends on whether it is used as a count noun or uncountably. The resulting field study or a case report reflects the knowledge and the system of meanings in the lives of a cultural group. Ethnography, as the presentation of empirical data on human societies and cultures, was pioneered in the biological, social, and cultural branches of anthropology, but it has also become popular in the social sciences in general, sociology, communication studies. History, wherever people study ethnic groups, formations, compositions, resettlements, social welfare characteristics, materiality, spirituality, and a people's ethnogenesis. The typical ethnography is a holistic study and so includes a brief history and an analysis of the terrain, the climate, and the habitat. In all cases it should be reflexive, make a substantial contribution toward the understanding of the social life of humans, have an aesthetic impact on the reader, and express a credible reality. An ethnography records all observed behavior and describes all symbol meaning relations, using concepts that avoid causal explanations. History and meaning. The word ethnography is derived from the Greek theta nu omicron sigma, meaning a company, later a people, nation, and graphy meaning field of study. Ethnographic studies focus on large cultural groups of people who interact over time. Ethnography is a qualitative design, where the researcher explains about shared learned patterns of values, behavior, beliefs and language of a culture shared by a group of people. The field of anthropology originated from Europe and England designed in late 19th century. It spread its roots to the United States at the beginning of the 20th century. Some of the main contributors like E.B. Taylor from Britain and Louis Henry Morgan, an American scientist were considered as founders of cultural and social dimensions. Franz Boas, Bronislaw Malinowski, Ruth Benedict and Margaret Mead were a group of researchers from United States who contributed the idea of cultural relativism to the literature. Boas's approach focused on the utilization of documents and informants, whereas Malinowski stated that a researcher should be engrossed with the work for long periods in the field and do a participant observation by living with the informant and experiencing their way of life. He gives the viewpoint of the native and this became the origin of field work and field methods. Since Malinowski was very firm with his approach he applied it practically and traveled to Trebriand Island which was located off the eastern coast of New Guinea. He was interested in learning the language of the islanders and stayed there for a long time doing his field work. The field of ethnography became very popular in the late 19th century, as many social scientists gained an interest in studying modern society. Again, in the latter part of the 19th century, the field of anthropology became a good support for scientific formation. Though the field was flourishing it had a lot of threat to encounter. Post-colonialism, the research climate shifted towards postmodernism and feminism. Therefore, the field of anthropology moved into discipline of social science. Origins Gerhard Friedrich Mullerow developed the concept of ethnography as a separate discipline whilst participating in the second Kamchatka expedition as a professor of history and geography. Whilst involved in the expedition, he differentiated Volker Beschrei Bungas of distinct area of study. This became known as ethnography, following the introduction of the Greek neologism Ethnographia by Johann Friedrich Schopelin and the German variant by A. F. Thilo in 1767. August Ludwig von Schlosser and Christoph Wilhelm Jacob Gasser of the University of Göttingen introduced the term into academic discourse in an attempt to reform the contemporary understanding of world history. 
Herodotus known as the father of history had significant works on the cultures of various peoples beyond the Hellenic realm such as nations in Scythia, which earned him the title Barbarian Lover, and may have produced the first ethnographic works. Forms of Ethnography There are different forms of ethnography. Confessional ethnography, life history, feminist ethnography etc. Two popular forms of ethnography are realist ethnography and critical ethnography. Realist ethnography is a traditional approach used by cultural anthropologists. Characterized by Vane Marnon, it reflects a particular instance taken by the researcher toward the individual being studied. It's an objective study of the situation. It's composed from a third person's perspective by getting the data from the members on the site. The ethnographer stays as omniscient correspondent of actualities out of sight. The realist reports information in a measured style ostensibly uncontaminated by individual predisposition, political objectives and judgment. The analyst will give a detailed report of everyday life of the individuals under study. The ethnographer also uses standard categories for cultural description. The ethnographer produces the participants' views through closely edited quotations and has the final work on how the culture is to be interpreted and presented. Critical ethnography is a kind of ethnographic research in which the creators advocate for the liberation of groups which are marginalized in society. Critical researchers typically are politically minded people who look to take a stand of opposition to inequality and domination. For example, a critical ethnographer might study schools that provide privileges to certain types of students, or counseling practices that serve to overlook the needs of underrepresented groups. The important components of a critical ethnographer is to incorporate a value-laden introduction, empower people by giving them more authority, challenging the status quo, and addressing concerns about power and control. A critical ethnographer will study issues of power, empowerment, inequality, inequity, dominance, repression, hegemony and victimization. Features of ethnographic research involves investigation of very few cases, maybe just one case, in detail, often involves working with primarily unconstructed data. This data had not been coded at the point of data collection in terms of a closed set of analytic categories, emphasizes on exploring social phenomena rather than testing hypotheses. Data analysis involves interpretation of the functions and meanings of human actions, the product of this is mainly verbal explanations, where statistical analysis and quantification play a subordinate role. Methodological discussions focus more on questions about how to report findings in the field than on methods of data collection and interpretation. Ethnographies focus on describing the culture of a group in very detailed and complex manner. The ethnography can be of the entire group or a subpart of it. It involves engaging in extensive fieldwork where data collection is mainly by interviews, symbols, artifacts, observations, and many other sources of data. The researcher in ethnography type of research looks for patterns of the group's mental activities. That is their ideas and beliefs expressed through language or other activities and how they behave in their groups is expressed through their actions that the researcher observed. Procedures for conducting ethnography Determine if ethnography is the most appropriate design to use to study the research problem. Ethnography is suitable if the needs are to describe how a cultural group works and to explore their beliefs, language, behaviors and also issues faced by the group, such as power, resistance and dominance. Then identify and locate a culture or sharing group to study. This group is one whose members have been together for an extended period of time, so that their shared language, patterns of behavior and attitudes have merged into discernible patterns. This group can also be a group that has been marginalized by society. Select cultural themes, issues or theories to study about the group. These themes, issues and theories provide an orienting framework for the study of the culture or sharing group, as discussed by Hammersley and Arkansas, Walcott, and Fetterman. 
The ethnographer begins the study by examining people in interaction in ordinary settings and discerns pervasive patterns such as life cycles, events and cultural themes. For studying cultural concepts, determine which type of ethnography to use, perhaps how the group works need to be described, or a critical ethnography can expose issues such as power, hegemony and advocacy for certain groups should collect information in the context or setting where the group works or lives. This is called fieldwork. Types of information typically needed in ethnography are collected by going to the research site, respecting the daily lives of individuals at the site and collecting a wide variety of materials. Field issues of respect, reciprocity, deciding who owns the data and others are central to ethnography. From the many sources collected, the ethnographer analyzes the data for a description of the culture sharing group, themes that emerge from the group and an overall interpretation. The researcher begins to compile a detailed description of the culture sharing group by focusing on a single event, on several activities or on the group over a prolonged period of time. Forge a working set of rules or generalizations as to how the culture or sharing group works as the final product of this analysis. The final product is a holistic cultural portrait of the group that incorporates the views of the participants as well as the views of the researcher. It might also advocate for the needs of the group or suggest changes in society. Ethnography as method the ethnographic method is different from other ways of conducting social science approach due to the following reasons. It is field-based. It is conducted in the settings in which real people actually live, rather than in laboratories where the researcher controls the elements of the behaviors to be observed or measured. It is personalized. It is conducted by researchers who are in day-to-day face-to-face -face contact with the people they are studying and who are thus both participants in and observers of the lives under study. It is multifactorial. It is conducted through the use of two or more data collection techniques, which may be qualitative or quantitative in nature, in order to get a conclusion. It requires a long-term commitment, i.e., it is conducted by researcher who intends to interact with people they are studying for an extended period of time. The exact time frame can vary from several weeks to a year or more. It is inductive. It is conducted in such a way to use an accumulation of descriptive detail to build toward general patterns or explanatory theories rather than structured to test hypotheses derived from existing theories or models. It is dialogic. It is conducted by a researcher whose interpretations and findings may be expounded on by the study's participants while conclusions are still in the process of formulation. It is holistic. It is conducted so as to yield the fullest possible portrait of the group under study. Data Collection Methods According to the leading social scientist, John Brewer, Data collection methods are meant to capture the social meanings and ordinary activities of people in naturally occurring settings that are commonly referred to as the field. The goal is to collect data in such a way that the researcher imposes a minimal amount of personal bias on the data. Multiple methods of data collection may be employed to facilitate a relationship that allows for a more personal and in-depth portrait of the informants and the community. These can include participant observation, field notes, interviews, and surveys. Interviews are often taped and later transcribed, allowing the interview to proceed unimpaired of note-taking, but with all information available later for full analysis. Secondary research and document analysis are also used to provide insight into the research topic. In the past, kinship charts were commonly used to discover logical patterns and social structure in non-Western societies. In the 21st century, anthropology focuses more on the study of people in urban settings and the use of kinship charts is seldom employed. In order to make the data collection and interpretation transparent, researchers creating ethnographies often attempt to be reflexive. Reflexivity refers to the researcher's aim to explore the ways in which the researcher's involvement with a particular study influences 
acts upon and informs such research. Despite these attempts of reflexivity, no researcher can be totally unbiased. This factor has provided a basis to criticize ethnography. Traditionally, the ethnographer focuses attention on a community, selecting knowledgeable informants who know the activities of the community well. These informants are typically asked to identify other informants who represent the community, often using snowball or chain sampling. This process is often effective in revealing common cultural denominators connected to the topic being studied. Ethnography relies greatly on up-close, personal experience. Participation, rather than just observation, is one of the keys to this process. Ethnography is very useful in social research. Ibema al. Examine the ontological and epistemological presuppositions underlying ethnography. Ethnographic research can range from a realist perspective, in which behavior is observed, to a constructivist perspective where understanding is socially constructed by the researcher and subjects. Research can range from an objectivist account of fixed, observable behaviors to an interpretivist narrative describing the interplay of individual agency and social structure. Critical theory researches address issues of power within the researcher-research relationships and the links between knowledge and power. Another form of data collection is that of the image. The image is the projection that an individual puts onto an object or abstract idea. An image can be contained within the physical world through a particular individual's perspective, primarily based on that individual's past experiences. One example of an image is how an individual views a novel after completing it. The physical entity that is the novel contains a specific image in the perspective of the interpreting individual and can only be expressed by the individual in the terms of I can tell you what an image is by telling you what it feels like. The idea of an image relies on the imagination and has been seen to be utilized by children in a very spontaneous and natural manner. Effectively, the idea of the image is a primary tool for ethnographers to collect data. The image presents the perspective, experiences, and influences of an individual as a single entity and in consequence the individual will always contain this image in the group under study.